Drone photogrammetry has become a common place in the drone world. Whether you're doing a mapping for a site or a building, a 2D map or a 3D model can be a great way to digitize the infrastructure and to understand the condition, the quantity and the state of, of objects on a job site. Over time, a number of different software packages have become available to help with drone photogrammetry. You give them a set of 2D images and hit the process button and they give you back a 3D model, although a couple of hours later. But how does drone photogrammetry actually work? What goes on under the hood and why does processing some maps and models take hours to accomplish? We're going to try and answer all of these questions in this video. Hey everyone, I'm Varun, the founder and CEO at Hammer Missions, and today I'm going to break down what happens behind the scenes when you try and run a photogrammetry processing option in photogrammetry software. Let's start with the data pipeline. In order to convert a set of 2D images into a 3D model, drone photogrammetry software typically implements a set of operations on the input data, that is the drone images. These operations are organized in the form of back-to-back -back steps, where the output from one step is the input to another step. This back-to-back -back step is appropriately called a data pipeline. Let's talk about the drone photogrammetry pipeline. A data pipeline can involve a number of different back-to-back -back steps. Let's have a look at the common ones below. Step one, feature extraction. The goal of this step is to essentially for the software to find key features that is a group of pixels in the input images which are invariant to the changing camera positions. That is, they look the same from different points of view of different cameras. Therefore, good features in a scene typically have similar descriptions, that is, mathematical structures in all images, and the software can actually find and extract that in the first step. This is one of the reasons why drone photogrammetry requires capturing the same subject from many different points of view. There are many techniques used in software to extract these key features. One of the common methods is something called SIFT, which stands for Scale Invariant Feature Transform but other techniques can also be employed. Moving on, step two in the data pipeline is feature matching. The goal of this step is to match the key features that are found in step one across different image pairs. This is done by taking every feature X and then comparing it with all the other features in other images uh, that essentially have feature X to see if the same feature can be found in different images. A quality score is calculated using the wide range of software techniques and image pairs with the same feature are then found and aligned or put together. This is one of the reasons why if drone photogrammetry fails to reconstruct with recurring patterns, with recurring patterns, you risk too many features looking the same across images and the software basically bundling everything together. So if you're collecting data for photogrammetry, a useful tip here is to avoid patterns and to get enough different looking features in your data set from many different points of view. Step three in the data pipeline is something called structure from motion or sparse point reconstruction. The goal of this step for the software is to reconstruct a 3D point cloud from the 2D points. A 3D point cloud is basically a set of points with estimated pose, which is essentially a combination of position and orientation, information that is attached to every point. So with steps one, two, three above, we have been able to identify a set of features that is a group of pixels and images, and also identify image pairs which hold these features we can now use this information to infer the rigid scene structure that is a 3D pose, 3D points with pose, and the internal calibration of all cameras. This is where structure from motion comes in. The above image that I've shown here looks daunting, but essentially the software estimates 3D points using triangulation techniques and the motion of key features over time. So in the image that is shown above, the red point and the purple point are features which have been found in two different images. The camera position and parameters are used to estimate the 3D position and orientation of the red and purple points. Once this process is repeated for enough but limited number of points, we get to what is known as sparse point cloud, which can be visually inspected to see if the reconstruction by the software is matching the target site or structure. Step four, the depth map estimation. Now that we have a sparse point cloud reconstructed, this means that the software has been able to put together a set of sparse 3D points with position and orientation information relevant to internal cameras. This step of the pipeline focuses on calculating the depth value for each pixel in the point cloud. 
The depth value for every pixel is essentially the distance of every pixel from the internal cameras computed in the previous step. Step 5. Dense point cloud meshing and texturing. So once the depth maps have been successfully computed, the goal of this final step in the data pipeline is to create a dense representation of the scene, that is a 3D mesh, and add textures to the 3D mesh. You can think of this step as essentially filling in the sparse point cloud by using all the pixel information from the input images and utilizing the full resolution of the input images. The output of this step is a dense point cloud, giving us a 3D model or a 2D map, which is orthophoto, of the target in its full resolution with added textures. The textured 3D mesh can then be exported into common 3D formats, such as the .obj file, and can be imported into other 3D software for further processing. And that's pretty much it. At a high level, at a high level, super high level, these are the five main steps involved in processing data using photogrammetry software for drone data, or any other data for that matter. Um, so in summary, we hope that this video was helpful in, in you being able to understand some of the inner workings of the drone photogrammetry software and the importance of collecting high quality data for high quality results. If you would like to learn more about photogrammetry, drone photogrammetry, and how to collect high quality data, please feel free to check out some of our learning resources and our other videos on this topic. Thanks so much for watching. If you found this video useful, please do give us a like. If you want to be informed when new videos are put out, please subscribe to our channel. And if you want to know exactly when a new video is out, hit that notification bell. Do like and share our video. We'll see you again in the next episode of Knowledge Hub.